Alright, it's bonus time. Look, there are lots of uses for these hyperplanes in higher dimensions that you might see eventually. Let's say you take a course in statistics and you want to do uh, linear regression on multiple variables. Let's say you're interested in machine learning or artificial intelligence. You will definitely use hyperplanes in analyzing data. Here's an example. Let's say you've got a high dimensional space full of data points. Let's say maybe a space of images. Then a support vector machine is the name for a hyperplane that separates one type of data point from another type of data point. So again, let's say you have a bunch of images of dogs and cats on the internet, and these are each represented as a data point based on the pixels. That's going to be a really high dimensional space. Some of your data points are pictures of dogs. Some of your data points are pictures of cats. A separating hyperplane is going to be something like the analog of a plane that cuts through the space and separates all the dog pictures from all the cat pictures. So that if you want to test a new image, is it a dog, is it a cat, all you need to do is figure out on what side of this hyperplane it lies. Okay, so that's the idea, but in practice, it's not so common to have a nice flat hyperplane that separates the data. Data is usually convolved and twisted up. We need more than lines and planes. We need calculus. We need the mathematics of the nonlinear. That is our eventual goal.